Welcome to a new Unreal Engine 5 step-by-step -step tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create spells, and make your character cast them. I'm working on Dungeon Forge, Legacy, an RPG, and I'm sharing my game dev tips with you. If you don't know how to retarget Mixamo animations to Paragon characters, check out my Paragon character series number 4, linked in the video description. If you're ready to level up your game dev skills, hit subscribe, and give this video a thumbs up to support the channel. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to add a spellcasting ability to your Paragon character. Head over to Mixamo.com and create a free account if you don't already have one. After selecting the Y bot, click on Animations and choose an animation for spellcasting. Filter the results by searching for Spellcast. Once you've selected your animation, click Download, choosing FBX and with Skin. Next, import the animation into Unreal Engine. To keep this tutorial concise, I'll refer you to video number 4 in this series, which explains the process in detail. The link is at the top of the video description. Let's verify that you have the spellcasting animation. In your project, navigate to Characters, Mixamo, Animations, and confirm the downloaded animation is there. In your Paragon Characters Animations, ensure the animation is retarget to your character skeleton. Right-click the animation, select, Create, then, Create Animontage. This animontage is essential for triggering the animation from your character's blueprint. Save all your files. Open the animontage, and modify the slot to allow it to play within the character's animation. Select, Default Group Upper Body, from the drop-down list. Save your changes. As a reminder, I'll explain why we choose, Upper Body. Open your character's anim blueprint. In the upper body layer, comment, you'll see that the slot will only play if it's set to upper body. Now, let's move on to inputs and their updated handling in Unreal Engine since version 5.1. In the character folder, create a new folder called input. Inside, create an input action, name it IA underscore spellcast, and open it. Ensure that the value type is set to digital bool. This allows you to handle a simple key press, as opposed to access based input. Next, create an input mapping context, name it IMC underscore my input context, and open it. This context holds a set of interactions and key bindings. Add the mapping we just created by clicking the plus button and selecting IA underscore spellcast from the list. Now, assign the key that will trigger the spell. I'm choosing the E key. No other parameters need to be modified. Save and close. The inputs are set up, so let's handle their triggering from the character. Open the player character blueprint for your paragon character. For clarity, I'll move the begin play event to the top. First, we need to declare the input context we created. This only needs to be done once. If you add more keys later, you can include them in the same context. Add a get player controller node. From the player controller, add a get enhanced input node. Then, add an add mapping context node and select the context we created. Next, add the event triggered by pressing the spellcasting key by searching for IA underscore spellcast. Make sure to select the event node. The started output triggers when the key is pressed. The completed output triggers when the key is released. Go to the components tab and drag the mesh component while holding control to create a get node. Add a play montage node and select the anim montage we created earlier. From the notify name pin, add a switch node. 
The notify name corresponds to the notification name in the montage, which we'll set up next. Connect the switch to the on notify begin pin, which triggers when a notification starts. Remove the default pin and add a new pin where we'll specify the notification name. Return to the spellcasting anim montage. At the point where you want the spell to appear, add a notification. Right click, select add notify, then montage notify. Select the created notification and give it a name. I'm naming it cast. Save and return to the player character blueprint to specify the notification name. Add a print string node to verify everything works correctly. Compile, save, and test the level. Pressing the E key should trigger the animation and display the print string. Great progress! Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on my latest tutorials, and give a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. Now, let's create the spell itself. First, choose a visual effect. I'm using a cascade effect that comes with the Paragon character I'm working with. There's a looping effect for when the spell is visible, and a remove effect when the spell ends, like when it hits an enemy or object. We'll use both. In the Characters folder, create a new folder called Spell. Create an actor, and name it BP underscore spell underscore parent. Right click it, and select Create Child. This creates an actor that inherits everything from the parent. I'm naming it BP underscore spell underscore deflect. Open the parent actor. Add a box collision component and rename it collision. This collision box will detect when the spell hits another actor in your game. Make this collision component the root of your spell to detect hits without enabling physics on all game actors. This is crucial for performance. Drag and drop the collision component onto the default scene root. Add a cascade effect for the visual rendering. Finally, add a projectile movement component for movement. Let's configure the collisions. Set can character step up to no. Set collision presets to custom. Set collision enabled to query and physics. Set to block all elements you want the spell to interact with in your game. Go to the construction script tab. We'll initialize all variables needed for movement. Add a speed variable of type float. Drag the projectile movement component and set its initial speed to the speed variable. Do the same for max speed. Set rotation follows velocity to true. Add a projectile gravity scale variable and set it. To allow customization of speed and gravity, check instance editable and expose on spawn for both variables. Compile and save. Now, configure the effect in BP underscore spell underscore deflect. Open it, go to the components tab and select your effect in the particle system. That's it for the spell setup. Compile and save. Let's return to the player character to spawn it. Remove the print string node and replace it with a spawn actor from class node. Select the spell class we created, not the parent, but the child. Add a self-reference to get the current actor, which is the player character. 
connected to the owner and instigator pins. Set a value for the speed, I'm using 600, and set gravity to zero so the spell isn't affected by gravity. Next, specify the position and rotation for spawning the spell. For rotation, from the player controller, add a get player camera manager node, then get the camera rotation. For position, we want the spell to spawn at the character's left hand, which casts the spell in the animation. Open your character's skeleton, filter for hand, and find the left hand. Right click and add a socket. With the new socket selected, move it to the desired position. Back in the player character blueprint, drag the mesh and add a get socket location node to retrieve the socket's position. Enter the name of the socket you created. Compile, save, and test. The spells should now spawn correctly. Notice that they stop when they collide with a game element. Let's handle the impacts. Open BP underscore spell underscore parent. Select the collision component and add an on component hit event. Check that other actor is different from get instigator to avoid handling collisions with the casting character. Add an event dispatcher called on projectile impact with an input variable named impact actor of type actor object reference. This event can be intercepted in the player character blueprint to handle things like reducing enemy health or damaging objects. Call this event and connect other actor to the impact actor input. Add a spawn emitter at location node for the impact effect. Promote it to a variable named impact fx. To get the impact location, break the hit struct and connect the hit location to the spawn emitter node. You can also add a play sound at location node for an impact sound following the same process. Finally, add a destroy actor node to remove the spell on impact. Compile and save. Now, define the visual effect and sound for the impact in BP underscore spell underscore deflect. In the construction script, add a set impact FX and a set sound effects node. Compile and save. Before testing, let's implement impact logic in the player character blueprint. Add a bind event to on projectile impact node. Connect it to an add custom event node. Add a print string node to display the reference of the actor hit by the projectile. Compile, save, and test. And there you have it, your character can now cast spells. Join our growing community by subscribing, and give a thumbs up to boost the channel's visibility and support more content like this. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and aids your progress in mastering Unreal Engine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.